Hello everybody. I hope that you had a good Sunday. Mine was kind of weird. That's why I'm a little tired because we had a storm system starting to go overhead at about 3.30 this morning. So it was too noisy to sleep, but the power was flickering, so it wasn't much that could be done <laughs> otherwise. So, anyway, it was interesting. But <laughs> let's get uh, to the subject of this live. Why I decided to do this is uh, because I've been getting all kinds of um, questions. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Loma. Hi, Karen. Hi, Ramona. Um, hi, Jessica. So, the, the questions were not just in comments on my various videos but uh, there were some that were also um, sent to me either through email or um, through my Facebook page both my personal and the um, Kalyana design one let me try to to get something right up because one of the uh, some of the ones that uh, I found the most interesting um, if you remember I did a while ago hi Janine hi Darla hi Ellen hi Petro hi Sarah hi Adelaide hi Rebecca yeah, I need to put new p polish on my fingernails because I've been working and it started chipping on the tips. Um, anyway, so one of the main things was about uh, cutting. And if you remember, I had at one point, um, there's actually a playlist that is... Uh, all about Mokumegane and it's a it's like a mini series let me just find it so I can put it up for you because I have so many playlists and so many <laughs> videos I actually I have over 900 videos right now on YouTube only not to talk about other ones uh, where the heck are you basic 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 there we go and the playlist is uh, called Mokumegane made easy and there you go so if you didn't watch it yet uh, please go ahead and watch it because it's very um, it's got a lot of important information for you and um, and the thing is that when I did that series, it was in the beginning of my channel. And as I said, when I first began my channel, I didn't have much stuff. Um, and when I did that series, I had a very, 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 very old blade. <laughs> and it was just a rigid blade and it was kind of thick and it was very hard to cut with. <laughs> so in those videos, I'm kind of struggling and uh, thank you hope so um i got quite a bit of the um, the questions refer to cutting and how to slice some okumegan and all that and my main thing and i discovered this these blades i discovered them first on amazon and um if you do not buy from polyclay play you can find them in my amazon influencer store if you scroll all the way at the bottom of the blades section only that be aware that it takes a while for you to get them because they come all the way from china i presume but um after i discovered them i talked to trish the owner of polyclay play and she managed to get in touch with 
the maker of them and um, she has these for sale at poly clay play and it's not just this but you also get like i had one separately i actually have three in this um they are only four inches that are exceptional for cutting blades the set comes with an eight inch one and the four inch one and it's under five dollars and remember when you buy from poly clay play please use my affiliate link because that allows me to do giveaways okay uh, i don't get money at poly clay play i only get store credit and but that still allows me to buy gift cards for others so you know very well especially the people who have won some um yeah it's very neat now first of all what you need for mokumegane uh, can you cut it with a rigid blade you absolutely can but it's not going to be as fine uh, these are the best blades that I found. They are very, very, super, super flexible. They are very, very thin and very, very sharp. So whenever you get them out of the case, be very careful. Uh, but these are the best blades that I found that are good for Mokumegane, uh, that are good for uh, mica shift and anything that requires any type of shaving now when it comes to mokumegane this is good for the stamped one but for the one that you have in a stack uh, and you turn the stack to the side to cut slices i would still recommend the cane ones another tip that i want to share with you if you have more than one blade that you use frequently do not put them in the same a receptacle because i know we all have the the habit of having you know like a little vase or a jar or something that we keep our blades in but by doing so and i'm going to actually show you exactly what i'm talking about if you keep them um in the same receptacle and you keep putting the you know taking them out putting them back in you're going to nick them and the nicks are minuscule but especially when you're talking about uh, mica shift but also in mokumegane it's going to leave streaks hi skywalker uh let me refocus this so i can show you really up close what i'm talking about okay so see the nicks see they are right right here there's a lot of nicks because these blades are very very fragile see there's another nick here and sometimes they can be even bigger than this but you can notice all the nicks in this blade because they are so thin they are quite fragile and whenever you put them back together they are going to nick each other so very careful for these unless you have uh, having a a blade protector helps a lot but it is very important to protect the blade that you uh, work with all the time to avoid those nicks hi gail hi joanne the um, you just use my um, affiliate link hi Catherine okay let me show you exactly how you can use it because there are several ways of using it okay so if you go to YouTube you go to my channel <coughs> excuse me first of all they are going to be all these little icons right here that have my amazon influencer store the facebook the poly clay play and my instagram 
but if you go to uh, see how you have all these tabs about and remember when you're looking for something always go to playlists because I've arranged all kinds of stuff here but if you go on the about tab and you scroll down you have all my links here absolutely all my links the other way would be to go to my website and on my website you if you click here where it says proud affiliate of polyclay play if you click here it's going to bring you to my affiliate link and it's actually the polyclay play, play thing only it carries my cookie and i get a few cents um uh, what you call it a few cents uh, commission as store credit or if you go to the facebook page of kaliana and if you go to about it's going to to give you all kinds of see all kinds of um links as well so but if you don't if you don't figure it out when you call trish or message trish that's gonna be just fine okay let's go back to to our thing now as i explained in that mini series it is very important um to choose your colors and there are many 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 mokumegane tutorials out there and some of them are fabulous and some of them are mm, hi gilda um and that is number one number one is the choice of colors number two is the deformation because as i said in uh, one of those uh, and i showed examples in one of those um, videos in the mini series um there's a little bit of a, a color theory uh, when you choose your colors for your mokumegane and if you do um your mokumegane and I'm talking about the stacked one. If you deform it too much, uh, it's not going to do to look good. It's going to look quite uh, busy. Uh, the same if you thin it out too much. Because let's get um, just the biggest. Um, the most known and biggest artists if we get the let's take Judy Picarello and uh, I'm going to go back to the display capture what do you notice in all her work that number one the colors are chosen very very carefully and I explained in one of those uh, mini series videos that she does one of those um, recipes for success that is uh, various hues of blue with various hues of orange that might be tinted or might be shaded the other thing is that she doesn't use a lot of deformation um, and i'll show you a few tips when it comes to this whole deformation thing but to to get back i mean you can use just two colors it's not a, a big deal or let's take lindley haunani who has a different palette Oops. for her mokumegane and she uses much more um, in terms of um, what you call it um, metal uh, leaf but let's see 
whenever she does a mokumegane, it's again one of those how to choose the colors and how to choose the patterns. Let's actually go for mokumegane. see if we get this is one of her oldest pieces and has been there for make sure that i'm i mean this is i think it's from the 90s but nevertheless you don't notice too many deformations because whenever you do too many deformations it's not going to look very good and again if you look at the colors chosen they follow that uh, uh, color um, theory uh, thing that I'm explaining in that mini series and that is the best thing to do if you want to have a successful mokumegane Yeah, I know. I have my AC on because my internal thermostat is very, very bad. Now, uh, when it comes to choosing the color, uh, your best bet is to start with black and white. Right? And you can add to that black and white. And you can, uh, you'll see, uh, if you didn't watch all of the videos in that mini series, you can watch them because you can do all kinds of um, color play with Skinner blends, with all kinds of stuff uh, to get a beautiful, beautiful uh, color uh, results. But. I'm going to give you a few examples of what happens when you introduce color. And as you can see, I'm staying in one range for now because I want to show you a very, very uh, simple in terms of color, how to do it. So, I'm going to get first, where's my square thing? I lost my square pieces. So, I'm going to get simply white and black, right? To start with. But as you will see with the black, I'm going to do the black much thinner than the white. And what I'm going to do with the black, I'm going to actually get it through the pasta machine on a much thinner setting. So I went with like a seven. Okay, so let's go first with the stacked. I'm going to first do a stacked one, right? Yeah, see, that is what is an interesting phenomenon because there's a lot of techniques that have been done by the first artist in polymer clay and then suddenly somebody nowadays just begins and reinvents them. 
But anyway, if you go on my uh, blog and you look at the, there's a tab there with the history of polymer clay, you can find more artists listed there. So what I'm doing is simply doing a little bit of stacking. And as you can see, I'm not using a lot of uh, clay because it's why, you know. And let's stack it again. and then give it some deformation right it's not a big try the i showed before there's those uh, little uh, plastic sheets that the hot patches come from in that you can put the clay in between and it's going to hold them hold the clay properly okay so Let's give it some round stuff. This is actually not round, this is actually a teardrop. So let's give it a teardrop. And a cut. some dots there's a lot of stuff that you can use to make all these deformed things and then just consolidate your thing let me actually get through the machine this so we can have a base. Okay, so this, if it were bigger, I could actually turn it on the side and just start slicing. But as it is at this dimension, uh, let me find my glasses and let's shave slices and see how it looks like. Okay, another thing is to actually get some releaser on your blade and I like to use armor roll. And obviously because I use the a thin black it's going to be very light in color, right?
but it still will be a pretty nice color palette and three D clay cutters. What is three D clay cutters? I thought they were all three D. By definition. Are you talking about the uh, printed ones? I'm not a fan of the printed cutters. They, uh, I have yet to find some printed printed cutters that are sharp enough to actually cut. So I think I only have like maybe four or five of them. Okay, I'm still having issues cutting. Uh, that's not the blade. That's my hand. But, as you can see, you can get a very, and you can get all kinds of other color combinations with it. So, let's go for a different color combination. And this time, I'm going to use the white. I'm going to use a yellow. And again, black. Yeah, and as I said, I'm not very fond of the 3D. Uh, personally, my most preferred Mokumegane is the stamped Mokumegane. The deformed stack is, I'm not very fond of. I never, with pleasure, silver. I was never fond of Picasso, for example. So, my mind is not very abstract. It's more, my definition of beauty is different. To each their own. You know, there are some people who are very good about that abstract and people who, no, no. then some black but in this case because I want to and you can do this in two different ways let me actually grab more yellow and you'll see the difference depending on how you stack I'm going to cut these in two and use two different stacks. But on this one I'm going to use equal thicknesses because you can use in a Mokumegane you can use different uh, thicknesses of the layers depending on the effects that you want to achieve. So in one of them I'm going to actually put black yellow white yellow in the other one I'm going to put black yellow white so these will have two different completely different effects let's see what we are getting here so let me stack and 
and I'm going to do the exact same deformations in them so you can see the differences how important it is how you stack your layers okay I'm going to go through the thicker setting and stack again and as you can see it's still quite thick the layers are still quite thick so I'm going to stack again and you can do a little bit of cutting here just to check how thin your layers are and this looks pretty good so let's stack I'm going to make it a little bit I'm stacking so I can make it a little bit more rectangular if you want uh, first of all keep in mind that whenever you do like this you're going to cause a deformation so even by simply doing this to the stack you're going to obtain a deformation Adelaide yeah that's the the main thing comment here yeah all right now let's see what we get here let me turn them on both with the black side up so you can see and let's do kind of the same thing maybe with some extra deformation just okay so I'm going to use a round this time see how it squished and pushed that's why I was telling you that depending on what type of effects you want to obtain with your Mokumegane you choose your clay if you want a lot of because if you have a soft clay like Primo or Souffle the moment that you push it's going to drag the clay from the layers from farther away it's going to drag them down while if you have a a uh, firm clay like Fimo Professional or Pardo or Kato, it's going to drag only the clay that's very near to the specific tool that you're using. So depending on the clay you're choosing, your deformation will look different. Primo being a fairly soft clay, especially if you're using the black and whites, that we all know are very very can be very very soft so another round in the middle of that one that's why I prefer to use the campers versus the ETBT cutters because you can you mean like the square pairs the tiny Pandora you can find the tiny tiny Pandora like these I 
do. Oops, sorry. Like these ones. Yes, surgeon is a soft one, so you'll get more more deformation. Okay. And they come in various. So if you go to tinypandora.com and you look for the square pairs, these are for reducing canes and you can use them like Karen said. Okay. Now let's give it another let's use a Okay, so I'm going to use my ripple blade and I'm going to use not the sharp part. I'm going to use the not sharp part. <laughs> Let's do this the same. Now, the thing with Mokumegana is that it's, you'll never get too exact two pieces exactly the same because it's kind of like Natasha beads I hate it when the toothpicks get all stuck I had another one here but I didn't see it in time Okay, so for this kind of little things, you can also use uh, combs or forks. This. And let's give it one more. This time I'm going to do, and I'm going to use the non-sharp side. So the deformations are approximately identical. Now I'm going to push them to consolidate them. Like for a cane. Uh, Mokumegane is uh, one of the very very important basic techniques because it can be used for so many things including uh, for gemstones or for wood or all kinds of stuff and I will show you here some other things so let's go ahead and try this wipe my blade so let's do first the one with just one yellow hi Judith yeah but I'd still go better for the camper the screwdrivers won't do much of star deformation unless you have a very thin layer because that star doesn't go far in it's just at the tip for like I don't know two millimeters three millimeters Okay, so I'm going to first press it to make sure that it stands still. And let's start shaving. And depending on how well you can shave, you're going to get more slices or less slices. I don't know about you, but myself, I absolutely love the, the toothpick deformations. I think that they leave a very nice thing. Actually, I think I did some uh, similar Mokume Gane in the... I had, I had a tutorial with pieces like Alien Landscape or something like that. 
that would not work for four opals. I don't see how that would work for four opals. You cannot really get a color. Okay, so we have this one that has only one layer of yellow. Let's compare it to the one with two layers of yellow. That's going to be a little bit It's going to have a little bit more interesting patterns just because you have more color combinations. And the one with just one yellow will look a little bit more elegant. Remember, for always for classiness, less is more. We still have a low um, air pressure here, so I'm still in a little bit of pain. But anyway, you can see the differences. Let me bring these up. But you can see the differences. This is with one layer of yellow. This is with two layers of yellow. Yeah, you get a little bit more effects, but I personally prefer the one with just one yellow. Now, let's move forward with one more thing that I'm going to show you before I start definitely hurting too much. <laughs> and that will be a stamped Mokumegane and um, how, to, how to shave it without, if you have hands slash blade problems. Okay, so for this one I'm going to choose the orange. And I'm going to show you the difference of how you la layer it. And you can obviously you can uh, you can use other colors. Just be very careful when you use um, pearl pearlescence or um, metallics that it's going to be to have a little bit of chatoyancy. Actually, for the only thing that you could use it for for opal would be for the matrix part of a bolder opal. More like a coral eat opal. Okay, so let's grab again, do another half seas thing. Hi, Edith. Yay, Amsterdam. Thank you, Rebecca. I actually have one that I'm editing. I was supposed to put it up yesterday, but things happened. And today I was supposed to work on it in the morning and storms happened. So I don't have much to still work on it, but hopefully, if not this afternoon, I'll put it up tomorrow. Talking of which, for the ones of you who didn't watch my monthly chat with you yesterday, Trish got the raspberry uh, bead that is so awesome to obtain uh, hammered metal effects. So don't forget to go check Polyclay Play and put, put them on your wish list for the next time you do your um, order. Okay. So, I'm going to use black, orange, and white, right? Let's get them a little bit well stuck together, and then I'm going to cut it in half.
why am I doing this if I'm doing the same layering? Because this time I'm doing a stamped Mokumegan and I want to show you how it looks if you put the white part on the stamp, the stamp on the white part and how it looks if you put the stamp on the black part. Okay, so let me get it a little bit thinner. And for this, you are going to need a stamp that uh, is fairly precise and fairly strong, deep. If you do not have a lot of strength in your arms to press it up, and I'm talking texture, not stamp. It's called stamped Mokumegane, but it's uh, done mostly with textures, not with stamps. Or you need a texture that can go through the pasta machine like uh, Makin's texture or Helen Braille's textures go through the pasta machine very good. So first I'm going to get them through the pasta machine on the thicker setting. Then I'm going to get them through the pasta machine. I got me a makings because I wasn't sure about my hands. So let's see which side do I want. I want this side up. So number one, let me put a little bit of release. And always put the release on the clay, not on the stamp, because it can be pulling on the stamp. Let me see if this camera works. All right. So I'm going to do one with the black, the stamp on the black. pretty good stamp as you can see and I'm going to do one with the stamp on the white all right so we have them both now um, you can shave this by using the thin blade and shave it like a mica shift or if your hands are not that terrific you can use a jar you can use a, a one of these a moose ring or whatever a, 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 a glass So just place your piece here and for this you don't even need a very thin blade you can do it with a rigid blade but it has to be fairly sharp and I showed this I did the, the beginning of the channel a tutorial on how to do a stamped Mokumegane almost like a hidden magic using just leftovers so the way that you go you simply start going like this and you keep going and I should have gone a little bit thinner than this but I'm starting to hurt and as I told you before my my brain when I start hurting isn't working right oh come on That's the deal when it's bad weather, I have issues. And this was way too much. You can still use these upside down. Yeah, I'm not cutting right. I'm sorry. I don't think I can show you this one today. I, I had all the 
goodwill but I don't think it's going to work properly my hands stopped working and my back started hurting so but this can be done like this <laughs> trust me that's what I'm doing and I am so 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 sorry anyway I'm going to to keep working on my uh, on that tutorial it involves this cane because I did a while ago the clay inlay in clay and I used the cane similar to this one and there were a lot of people who asked me how to do this cane because when I used it it was just a cane remnant so I went ahead and I did one like this and then I made a pendant with it so look for it because it's going to come really soon if not this afternoon tomorrow for sure okay thank you so much for understanding I need to go lay down a little bit <laughs> my my back muscles started screaming at me thank you so much don't forget to thumbs up I hope that I gave you uh, useful tips and you enjoyed it and uh, i'll try as soon as i get a little bit more um, caught up i promise you i'll get online on lives much uh, faster fortunately i wasn't i didn't schedule the storms if it weren't stormy it were much better <laughs> thank you so much have a wonderful what's left of sunday okay thank you <laughs> bye